good morning students uh, welcome back uh, the last part of module 1 today okay uh, so we have seen thoroughly the sic architecture sic xe architecture their addressing modes their memory their instruction formats and then the instructions all these things in the first phase after that uh, we have seen the sic xe architecture too and then the variations from uh, sic we have written program in both the architectures sic as well as sic xc then we went on to the assemblers typically the assembler task is to allocate addresses to all the instructions as well as all the declarations what the user has made and then it should convert the minomics to opcore and operands to opcore oh, sorry and operands to its concerned addresses so this is implemented by using the two passes pass one as a definition pass and pass two as a conversion pass and how it is done for an sic program using the three data structures of core table symbol table as well as location counter we have seen we have seen the algorithm for two passes of the assembler following which we have seen the machine dependent assembler features means to say how those specific instructions with relative addressing mode that is base relative or pc relative addressing mode or immediate addressing mode or extended addressing mode are being assembled with the six different flags and all these things we have seen these variations we have seen following which we also have uh, uh, seen that uh, okay following which we have also seen the machine independent assembler features that is like literal symbol defining statements expressions and the following which we have also seen the different design options of the assemblers which is one pass assembler load and go assembler as well as uh, the assembler which writes the object code to a file also we have seen the object code file format containing the text record header record as well as the modification record we have seen the program reallocation and we instruct the assembler how to modify the operands Uh, according to the load address this happens only with the format code instruction these are all the variations we have seen means to say completely we have seen the features machine dependent features machine independent features the working the implementation of the assemblers that's the uh, long thing or the major contents of our module 1 which we have covered going further and uh, uh, everything in the syllabus is completely covered we can cross verify with the videos as well as with the your syllabus right following which we have a very small concept called a macro processors that is what is the discussion of the day and this doesn't need much time as we have using the macros and symbol defining statements in our high level programming languages like in c we have used the symbol defining statements where i can write hash define max 100 wherever the max is seen it will just be substituted with a value 100 Right. So that is symbol defining statement. We can also write functions, which we actually call as macros in our C programming languages. Something like I can call uh, hash defined square x, uh, and I can write, give the code as x into x. Means wherever this function, so sort of function mean, like the square of x is called, it will be replaced by the body of the function x into x. X may be any value which the user specifies as a parameter, and x is a parameter that is passed to the macro. so such sort of things is called as macro definitions and whenever the macro expansion happens the code of the macro or the body of the macro will be replaced right so this doesn't happen during the assembly this happens before the assembly and this macro processor do not analyze your code please understand macro processor do not analyze the code the task of your macro processor is just to replace the name and the parameter of a macro by its body name and the parameter of the macro by its body and you can pass different parameters the parameters are actually substituted in the place wherever is the arguments are used or wherever the parameters are used so the just the substitution is the task of your macro processor this macro processor actually runs before your assembly so as we are just learning about assembly to be specific if it is a high level programming language first 
macro processor expands the source code by expanding all the macro definitions, means all the macro invocations, wherever it is. Then it goes to the compiler. The compiler comes out with the assembly language code. The assembler then takes the assembly language code and converts it into the object code, which will be then given to a loader and linker, which will resolve all the external references. And then it is going to put for the execution and we are ready for executing the program and seeing the output. So we are just talking about console. But in the application, these things happens in a web. Right? Okay, yeah, come back to our uh, discussion of our macro processor. As a macro processor replaces the macro name wherever it is by the corresponding source language statements. It may be a one statement or it may be a set of statements. The macro name will be replaced by the set of statements which is defined as a macro. Okay. And a macro represents a set of source program uh, statements which is given a name. And the invocation of the macro is happens or happens by uh, wherever the name of the macro being used in your program, wherever the name of the macro appears, that will be replaced by the code content. This is nothing new. We know this. And macro processor doesn't uh, do any analysis, just do the substitution. How to define a macro? It is done by using two assembler directives. One is a macro, which is going to start uh, specify it's a start of a macro processing. Uh, sorry, my start of a macro definition and MN. So this you need to remember. Macro starts the macro body. MN stops the macro body. As simple as that. Uh, these are two assembler directives. But the syntax of using it is like this way. And MN don't have any arguments. The macro will have the arguments. The name of the macro will be written at the left hand side because it is stated as a label followed by the macro. So as to tell that it is a macro followed by the arguments and arg1 and r 2 It may be any number of arguments and this will be converted into a positional parameters later. So means to the say first value whatever you pass will go into the first argument, second value whatever will pass will go into the second argument and it will be treated inside your macro processor as a positional parameters and 1 and 2 so on. Or question mark 1, question mark so on. Okay. So, as I told, it is a position parameters. The statements between macro and macro end, or whatever is the number of statements, maybe a single statement or maybe a set of statements will be substituted during the macro invocation. So, when you call the name of the macro, that set of statements which is written between macro and macro end will be substituted. So, either you are a macro processor, doesn't do any processing, just to substitute that code. In your source code it means it will expand the source code by what you call uh, expanding the macro definitions or macro or substituting the macro definition wherever the invocation has happened right and why to use macro if we have certain repetitive code which we can put it as a macro it can be called many times with a different parameter just similar to function but function needs an invocation putting it into the stack it is a runtime implementation that will happen but the macro happens before the compile time or before the assemble time. So it is going to be replacing the entire code. Something like we might have heard of inline functions. So where is the body of the functions will be replaced. Similar to that will be our macro, how it works. Yeah, uh, and I cannot keep on telling the story. We shall see an example. We have two macros here so to be precise in our example and one main program. Okay, main program actually doesn't contain any code. We have the macros itself will be highlighted here because that's the concept to be discussed. We have a macro called read buffer. This read buffer, actually the name itself suggests, it reads from an input device and stores it in a buffer. That's what is a uh, macro does. Have a look at the code, the complete table. So no location counter address, nothing is being done because it's a macro definition. Later on when we see, we're going to add up this location counter after expansion okay yeah the name uh, okay yeah start zero it has been told that it should start with zero okay mm, read buff is the name of the macro and followed by that we have uh, the assembler directive macro specifying that the following set of statements until m and is reached will going to be considered as a macro that's what is the understanding Read buff is the name of the macro till the M end. All the statements will going to be belonging to the macro definition. 
and it is taking three parameters. One is in device, the ampersand indicates it's a uh, parameter to the macro and in device, and buff and and length. These are the uh, three parameters. Just like in our function, these are the formal parameters, which will be replaced by the actual form of actual parameters during the invocation of the macro. Remember, in device buff len are the names which are just representing the formal parameters. When uh, it is invoked, the actual parameters will be replaced here. Yeah, have a look at the first statement of the macro clear x, x register will be filled with 0, clear a, a register will be filled with 0. LDS and len, the length, whatever is being specified, is put onto the s register. Then we are doing test device and in device. Right, the in device uh, parameter that is passed, whichever the input device you give, that will go to be tested. Okay, and if it is jump equal to star minus three, this is the thing that needs to be understood. As it's a macro definition, it will going to be substituted in your code, in your actual code. So your macro invocation will be expanded. I cannot give a label when the macro when the substitution happens. So we are relatively specifying the place how much you should go back how much you should go back i'm telling if a jump equals to happens subtract the current program counter value minus three current the current substitute the current program counter value minus three means go back three bytes before that means we should again go back to test device and again we should repeat this same thing please understand it's quite a simple thing okay and if that doesn't happen if jeq doesn't happen Please, the device is free. This we have used this program many times again, and we are telling read device. Read the device means one byte is read from the input device, and that will be put into uh, means read from the input device uh, and put into accumulator. And store character stch contents of accumulator that is one byte which is read is placed onto and buff. So buff should be a string of a specified length, whatever it is. And tix and your length should have the count. Okay. And the tix and length, we are comparing the x contents with the length. If it is less than, we'll go back to, means we'll go back to reading the next byte. That's why we are telling star minus 50. Means we should go back to 15 bytes. And if I look at the 15 bytes, we again should go back to test device again. So this character by character reading from the input device and placing it onto the buffer will repeat until the length. If you have given 10, 10 bytes will be read and placed into buffer. If you have given 20, 20 bytes will be read and put into the buffer. So this process continues. And the last statement is as usual is MN. So when the TIX means that the condition get false, means uh, it is not less, X is not less than the length, then we go to the macro end. So whenever you invoke the read buff macro, the statement starting from or the instruction starting from clear till JLT will be replaced there. It will be it may be followed by any statement of your main program or it may be followed by another macro invocation. We don't know, right. Similarly, we have one more macro that is write buff. Write buff is the macro. And observe the we have a copy start to zero. That is not there in the red book. The reason to be is the copy is the name of the program what you are writing, not the macros. Macro name is read book. So we are starting the program. Means to say, how you should visualize this is you should have first the read book macro definition and then the write book macro definition, and then you should have the main program. Wherever in the main program you are invoking the read book or write book. This contents or this code will be replaced in that particular thing. Right? So that's the thing. The first statement in the read buff is not belonging to read buff, but it is belonging to your main program to be specific. Okay, in the write buff macro, we have three parameters again out device, and buff, and and length. Similarly, we have clear x, clear a, clear the contents of the x and a registers. You are looking at LDS, loading the s register with the length again, the same thing we are doing. And LDCH buffer command X. What is this write buff macro is doing? Read buff read from the input device and stored it into the buffer. The write buff will going to read character by character from your buffer and will going to write it onto the output device. Okay. 
and uh, LDCH buff comma X, wherein it read the first character from your uh, string because X is already set to zero. And then we'll go into test the output device. And if it is equal, we'll go into jump back to the test device only. This will be repeated until the device becomes free. And then we'll go into do write device uh, to write device the contents of accumulator that is loaded by your LDCH will be written onto the output device. Again, we are comparing the X contents with the length. So TIX will increment the X by one and then compare with the length. If it is less than, again, we go on test the device and again, write the next device. So these are the two macros what we have defined. One to read from the input device and store it onto the buffer. The other one to read from the buffer and write it onto the output device. This is just a mechanism to demonstrate how the macro works. Further, we move on, and as I mentioned, that star three and star minus three, star minus fifteen, uh, is uh, specifying the position or the instruction to which you should jump back or jump forward because this should be replaced. Miss this code will be replaced in your main program, so it should be related. So for that reason, we are not using labels. In place of label, we are using star minus three, star minus fifteen. This is sort of representation. Okay, this is my main program. Main program doesn't have anything apart from the declaration. You can see that in the main program, after the copy start zero, uh, we are having the next statement in your main program is read buff. You are calling the read buff macro, and then you are calling write buff. Read buff macro, we are passing three parameters. Now there is no ampersand because these are actuals. These are actual parameters: IP, buffer, length. IP is declared as uh, an hexadecimal constant at F1. Buffer is uh, declared as a string of 20 bytes. Length is having the word, means integer constant, 10. Similarly, OP is declared as uh, a hexadecimal constant as 0. Means the input device hexadecimal ID is F1. Output device hexadecimal ID is 0. And buffer and length buffer is a string length is a integer constant so next um, is uh, we are also calling the right buffer which will going to take the output device as well as buffer and as well as the length so this much is our main program okay so once after expansion what will happen let's just see this is what has happened after the expansion you can see in the main program we are calling read buffer and okay in your expanded, in your expanded uh, program, you have copy start zero. After that, your location counter is starting from zero because it is indicated in your program. And you can see at zero, 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 we have a statement clear AX, then we have clear EA. These are all of the statements that is belonging to your read buff till zero, zero, one, eight. So in zero, zero, one, eight, we have JLT star minus 15, which was the last statement of your read buff macro, you can examine here the last statement of before m end is your JLT star minus 50. So the first statement in your misery, sorry, the second statement in your main program is your invocation of read buff with IP buffer length, right? That is being replaced. And observe here in the statement at 0006, there we have written and length, which was a formal parameter. Now it is replaced by length. In a similar, a similar case, TD we had written is equal to X mm, and in device, which was a formal parameter. Now it has been replaced by the actual parameters IP. Similarly, in 00F we have RD IP. Similarly, we have in STCH 0012, we have we had there as STCH and buffer comma X. But now it is replaced by the actual parameters buffer comma x. Similarly, in TIX also we had and len, but now it is got replaced by the actual parameters len. So this is how the macro expansion is been done. At 001e, sorry, at uh, yeah, at 001b is an expansion of our second macro invocation that is right buff. Right buff was the second. Actually, the third statement of your main program, which is an invocation of macro right buff. Similarly, you can see that the right buff macro being invoked. And you observe at 0033, location counter 0033 in the right hand side table, 
it is the last statement of your right book matter right book and in your main program this should be followed by the main program actually the right main program had a two invocation of macro one is the read buff other one is the write buff which anyway got expanded by its contents and now what's remaining rest is your declarative statements that is declaration of your buffer length ip op that is being left out you can see at 0036 we have the declaration of a buffer which is 20 bytes so the next location counter address will go to be 0056 and then we have mm, uh, three bytes for the integer constant then we have uh, 0059 because three bytes is consumed and then from ip is one byte and op is one byte so we have 0059 0058 and that's the end of the program now this is the expanded program ready to be given to your assembly see your macro processor int hit anything apart from substitution it never analyzed it never changed anything it only replaced the actual sorry formal parameters by actual parameters depending on the invocation statement whatever you have given and it just copied the code of your macro definition to the place of macro invocation so as simple as that so it's just a substitution so how this is implemented, how this works is what actually we need to know. So the implementation of macro process. What is macro? What is definition? What is expansion? We have seen. The next thing we need to see is the macro process or implementation for which we need to understand the data structure used for implementing the macro processor. So we use three data structures as this three is a common number. So assembler also uses three data structures. Macro processor will also use three data structures. Uh, loading linkers will also linkers will also use three data structures. This is going on in the same way. And majority of the times we are going to have two pass in all the cases. So very few cases we have one pass. But in specifically macro processor will have a one pass for macro processor, right? Only one pass for the macro processor, not two passes. We shall see the algorithm later. Uh, three data structure is used. One is called as a definition tab, def tab. Contains the macro definition, whatever is the macro statements and all. Uh, that will be stored in this particular thing. The parameters, whatever you have told, something like and in device, and of and let, will be converted into the positional parameters, which will be written something like question mark one, question mark two, so on. A question mark one indicates the first parameter, formal parameter. Question mark 2 will indicate the second formal parameter and so on, which is given so that during the macro invocation, whatever the actual parameters is stored, that should be substituted into your macro. For that reason, we are using the number convention or a positional parameter representation. The second thing we have is a name tab, a name tab, uh, which contains uh, macro names. And this macro names will have pointer to your definition. Macro name should match to the definition. So this will be pointing to the beginning and end of your macro. Means whatever is the statement, that should be substituted for the name of the macro. It should be pointing to the beginning of that macro, first statement of your macro definition, as well as the last statement. I am not including the macro and macro. Between the macro and macro, and whatever the statements will going to be specified okay means will be pointed by your name tab okay contains the macro names access index to your definition tab for each macro name tab contains the pointer to beginning and end of the macro this is what i have told the third one we have is a argument table this argument table contains the arguments during macro invocation which is passed by the invoking uh, means invoking statement in your program so this invoking statement may specify the actual parameters which will be stored in a table called as an argument table. during expansion uh, this question mark one question mark two will be replaced by the argument one argument two present in the argument table as simple as this only three data structure definition table name table as well as argument table okay uh, and this uh, macro processing the question will going to be either the algorithm or either the data structure uh, or you cannot be as good with the uh, explain with example sort of thing. Usually, as good is the algorithm and data structure. Yeah, have a look at this picture. This will going to give us a 
clear definition of all the data structure, how it is used. We have the definition table. The definition table is a continuous table if you were to have uh, more than one definitions also. Here we have the read buffer definition. The re read buff, in device buffer, and uh, uh, something like that. Length. The statements are there and end is there. So the name table, which is going to keep the name of the macro and pointers to your definition table. See, the read buff is having two pointers. One pointer pointing to beginning of your macro, one pointer pointing to your end of the macro. Something like you can uh, think that as a linked list with uh, mm, two pointers. So sort of thing can be used. There's a name table. And argument table is having the arguments uh, for, for the invocation of this macro, which is having F1 buffer length. F1 is your input device, buffer is your buffer, as well as your length is the length of the number of bytes that should be used, which we have declared as usual. Okay. So this is what is the three data structures used. Name table contains the definition table contains the definition of the macro, argument table contains the arguments. Very easy to remember. Fine. We shall proceed. We have the algorithm for macro processing, very simple sort of algorithm. Okay. Here two major uh, procedures or the functions will be called again and again. One is called get line, one is called process. Get line is to get a line either uh, from your uh, what you call uh, definition table during expansion. Please observe these two differences. During expansion, the statements are got from definition table because it's already been stored. Wherever the name appears, the name should be replaced by the contents of your definition table and the arguments from your argument table during expansion. But if it is during uh, definition of a macro, means when you are writing the macro, means the macro is seen for the first time, then the contents of the macro will be read from the source file and it will be written onto your definition table. Only these two things is the actual task your macro processor needs to do. During definition, copy the contents from source program to definition table. During expansion, copy the contents from definition table to the, uh, what do you call, source program. That's it. During, and it, it should be at that place where it is being invoked. This, this is what is the task. So just see the algorithm, <coughs> begin macro processor. Expanding is equal to false. Means expanding is equal to false means it is a definition. Getting the idea? Expanding is equal to false means it is a definition. While opcode is not equal to end get line process. That's what is the thing what we are doing. And uh, procedure for you see the right side of the screen. Uh, procedure define we have. <coughs> enter the macro if it is a definition. Enter the macro name into the name table. Obviously the name should be written into the name table. Enter the macro prototype into the definition table, obviously. And this level is equal to one, level is equal to two, what is this? And in textbook it's discussed in a lot of uh, discussion has been done. I thought it's not of any use. See, we can have, I mean, I didn't told anywhere that we need to have only one macro definition. We can have multiple macro definition. There's other possibility that we have, we can have a, a nested macro definition. A macro definition may happen within a macro definition. During that time, we need to have this, uh, what do you call, uh, level. And level is made equal to one as a first one. If it is, you see one more macro definition within that, uh, level will equal to be increased. Increment, that's it. So, within which this, what we are trying to do, we are getting the contents from, if it is not a comment line, we are going to get the contents from, uh, source program and that will be written into your uh, what you call def tag. This is what is the beginning. And here the process line. Search for the name tape uh, for opcode, search it uh, process line and if found then expand is uh, if the opcode is macro then we are calling define. If it is not see we have not seen this macro then obviously it is expanding and we are going to expand. Yeah. We have uh, See the procedure for expand. If expanding is equal to two, get the first line from the definition tab, set up the arguments, and we're going to write it into the file. Right? Again, here, while not end of the macro definition, get line process. Again, 
So the get line, what it is doing? Get next line for the macro definition from definition table, and that is going to be list. So this is the algorithm for your macro processor. So you may be asked for the data structures, you may be asked for the algorithm. This is one of the things. So no need to buy and remember the algorithm. You can just have some pointers and you can similarly write this. Okay. So this is the last topic of your what you call um, module one. Here we complete the module one in all respects. We will go into and I'll, 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 I'll find out some of the uh, what you call uh, important questions that might be asked to this examination. And I'll send you across. You can try to solve them. So that is going to give you a better understanding and practice on this particular topic. topic right? We shall stop here. From the next class, we'll be moving on to module two. The plan is like this: we will complete module two, uh, which is loaders and linkers. It's quite easy if at all you have understood the what you call uh, the expressions and the symbol defining statements. Uh, we shall see the variations there, and then we shall proceed with our module five, which is uh, our module four. Rest of the things that is the uh, bottom up parts. And we shall see uh, later on. We can go to the module either of either. Fine. Thank you. Thank you for joining. That's the end of the class.